Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to our Mountaineer Game Day studio. Angelica Trenone and Ryan Decker here with you this week for the WVU Game Preview. So the regular season is winding down. Just three games left for West Virginia. Its next matchup takes it to Manhattan, Kansas to face Bill Snyder's Wildcats. Now, KSU coming off an overtime win over Texas Tech last week. And West Virginia back in the win column after a great win over then number 14, Iowa State. WVU can really just controlled possession, got the run game back going, limited mistakes and turnovers, and it's going to need that same execution and effort again this week. Now in that matchup, rediscovered the run game. West Virginia's offense got back on track, and more importantly, the players stepped up and answered the call that the you know coaches were saying to them all week about toughness and you know one of the the better games that they've played in quite a while. Yeah, it was. You know, just starting with the running running game, Justin Crawford, he really returned to form. He looked healthy. He said he was feeling better. Uh, said the game kind of just slowed down for him, and he slowed the game down for himself a little bit. That's what he kind of told me after the game for 100 yards for the first time in over a month. Um, he, he was just making better cuts, and that, that was, I think was the biggest thing for him. Kenny McCoy looked good in the running game, but then, yeah, you talk about the, the toughness. Both lines, offensive line and defensive line, played much better when it came to run blocking, especially with the offensive line. It looks really good. Yeah, and if you look uh, on the defensive side, dealing with injuries, once again, I think four to five starters were out for that game, mm -hmm. and one of them being, um, you know, on the defensive line, and actually Lamont McDougal, uh, Reese Donahue, and um, Ezekiel Rose were the co-defensive champions for that game. And just if you look at the defensive defense as a whole, Tony Gibson tweeted, that in his 23 years of coaching, he has never been more proud of a way a unit really just stepped up and rise to the occasion than they did against the Cyclones. Yeah, I mean, you think all year for this WVU team, that they've played maybe one game where the entire unit's been together. It's kind of been this constant revolving door of one guy goes down, one, another guy goes down, and then another one. So now that David Long's back, he's playing well, then you talk about the the entire front three uh, of that defensive line with D McDougal, Reese Donahue, and uh, Ezekiel Rose. They played really good. Rose got the big sack early in the game. And, uh, you know, even if statistically those three didn't have the biggest games, their impact was big because they were opening up holes for guys like David Long, Kaiser White, Al Rashid Benton to get in the backfield as well. Yeah, Ezekiel Rose, he's really just been coming along, and he's a guy who he's been a lot of, a lot of fun to watch here over the past few games. So definitely one of the best performances for the WVU defense in Big 12 play so far this season. It's going to be another tough challenge this weekend. And like Tony Gibson said, the way that it's going to be a challenge, um, you know, for them is it's going to be hard to prepare because there's a lot of unknowns. So Kansas State very good with the, um, you know, at the run game as well with their quarterbacks. But it's a quarterback mystery right now. You've got Jesse Ertz. He's been out for the past couple games with a knee injury. And then uh, Denton started in the overtime win against Texas Tech. But it was the red shirt freshman Skylar Thompson who actually finished it off and led um, Kansas, uh, Kansas State to, I believe, its largest fourth quarter comeback victory on the road. So if you're Tony Gibson's defense, um, he had told us earlier in the week, you can't prepare for three separate guys. You just got to put one game plan together and, and you'll see which one goes out there. Yeah, I mean, it's tough to prepare because all three do everything a little bit different. You know, Jesse Ertz is probably the most complete quarterback because he's been there the longest. And you go to Alex, uh, Alex Delton, and he's a very good runner. Uh, he led the Kansas State Wildcats in rushing yards, I believe it was two games ago against Oklahoma when he ran for 142. So he's a very good runner, but also can throw the ball pretty well and then Skylar Thompson he's the youngest only a redshirt freshman I believe so he, he's kind of the most unproven but that means there's the least amount of tape on him available so yeah it's going to be very tough for this defense to prepare and we've kind of seen in the past that running quarterbacks have been hard to defend for this West Virginia team and now if you look at the other side the Kansas State defense not as strong as it's been in years past but still a defense that's pretty great at stopping the run and if you look, though, Will Greer has thrown for over 300 yards with the exception of that one game, that Oklahoma State game. And this Kansas State defense has allowed three straight quarterbacks to pass for over 400 yards on it. So uh, what do you think there? Does West Virginia have the matchup advantage? I think so. You know, we, we've talked about sometimes this year how West Virginia does have the taller wide receivers and Karan White and David Sills and Gary Jennings. So they've probably got height on their side. And as well as the fact that it, it was funny in Dana Holgerson's press conference on Tuesday, he talked about the cornerback just a little bit, never mentioned the safeties. Really didn't stick on the uh, secondary a whole lot. So you can kind of tell he thinks he's going to be able to throw over top of the secondary a lot this, uh, this week, and especially if the running game can get going for West Virginia, then that opens up everything in the pass playbook. And we, we saw last week how when the running game is going well, the, the passing works just as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see if West Virginia's offense can uh, come out, start hot, and stay hot, just like it did last game. But if you look at the uh, a big statistic here, WVU has never <coughs> won a game in Manhattan, and actually under Coach Holgerson, they're one and four against the Wildcats. That lone win coming last season mm -hmm. here in Morgantown, and just by one point. So definitely, anytime these two uh, these two teams shape up, it's going to be a good game. That's what we're looking forward to this weekend as well. And of course, we've got plenty more on the matchup coming your way this weekend on a brand new episode of the Dana Holgerson Show. And our coverage starts bright and early on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for a new episode of Mountaineer Game Day kickoff between West Virginia, the number 23 Mountaineers and the Wildcats on Saturday at 3.30. And we appreciate you joining us here this week on the WVU Game Preview for Ryan Decker. I'm Angelica Trenone, and we'll see, we'll see you here right again next week.